Hello, my name is Trollmaker. This is the War Game Cup. It's a tournament sponsored by UGen Systems for their game War Game European Escalations. And it's sponsored by Intel. And today I have a little matchup between uh, Blue, pack player named Wasabi, and the red player, little known player, top of the game, Tiga. He's been consistently number one in the ladder for probably a year now. He's won a lot of invitational tournaments, and he's just overall done very, very well. And it's a little bit of a treat to get a game from Tiga, because you don't know what to expect. Now, the first game we saw from Tiga in this tournament, he just completely stomped in his opponent. It was a two-minute endeavor. We're now into round three, and Wasabi is a little bit better of an opponent than what we've been seeing so far for Tiga. And this means that... Wasabi could also have watched a lot of Tiga's older games and created a playstyle specifically to try and snipe him. And the idea of taking Tiga out of the tournament is kind of big for not just for Wasabi but for everybody. Because it just makes the path to the, the finish a lot easier if you don't have to deal with Tiga. Who, like I said, is, is kind of just one of these really good players. He had a very good early understanding of the game. And he's kind of developed most of the metagame for it. Of course, he is playing Pact. He does play both factions. And that will actually do very well for him. As a lot of his earlier games, he can play as NATO. And just, you know, show a completely different style over and over and over and over. It looks like we're seeing a lot of tanks. Meaning either a lot of open field combat or a big push. And he's got a Buratino in here as well, which can be used for... Um, there's one really great use. Basically, when people move command their stuff, they usually go through this this road here, and you just completely squash a lot of enemies. So we're seeing some early movements, and whoa, Scott might catch the recon. It, oh my god, it does. Tiga very fast on the clicking there. And it looks like Tiga is going to form a very safe defensive line. He's going to keep Hotel and Foxtrot, not really wanting to get Cheese Attorney. Here goes the Bertino firing on a single Scott here in the woods, a loaded full of infantry, and some relatively minor damage takes out a single Scott. But it's just enough for this Matsutsun to be able to get in himself. And this is kind of a power artillery move. You hit your artillery, then you move in with your units, and this way the enemy could likely be stunned. So, um, yeah, we're actually seeing a pretty standardized game. A slight advantage actually goes to, and this is surprising, Wasabi, who, although he's behind in points, he has Bravo and Charlie, which means that he'll be having roughly either doubled units or doubled value in units. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is Tiga, and Tiga's slowly moving up his forces. He will probably, yep, and here it goes, the command is actually going to be pulled into Echo. And a lot of the better players are keeping their command center at their starting location, not because this is good. I should stress that that's not a good play. The reason why they do it is because everybody knows that they're good players and everybody is going to try and ch ch, -ch cheese And if you have both of your commands too close to each other, as in, you know, like maybe here and here, 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 it just makes it too easy for a helicopter all in to just wipe you out. And so by doing this kind of opening strategy, keep in mind that it's against the person who you expect to cheese. Although you will be a little bit behind in the game, it's much better than just all around losing. And so we're seeing a lot of small shifts and movements here from Tiga. Just trying to get perfect flanks, perfect positions. And we can see the standardized play, which is interrupt the reinforcement line happening. Tiga has t t t t no, four spoos probably with those VPZUs, and a recon actually picks them off. The spoos respond. Could actually get the recon, but the recon goes into cover, and looks like, it, nope, it's not in cover. It's actually rooting last minute. What bad luck is that? And it looks like he's actually going to chase down this BRDM, which is, um, I think it's like a tier 2 BRDM. It's, um, uh, you know, a relatively all right <laughs> recon unit. It is slightly armored, so that makes it pretty good. You see lots of recons actually moving around the map from Wasabi, just trying to get an idea of where the enemy is. And there is, 
a group of VPZUs with all their ammunitions off, not wanting to get spotted just yet. Oh, Tiga, you sneaky dog, you. And look at this position he's taken here. He has his mod shoots and split up into a position here. And, uh, whoa, artillery actually going to pound on a location where probably maybe these woods here or forward location. It's relatively close fire, though, so it will do... Oh, nope, he's actually going to pound onto Echo. And, um... You know, getting getting artillery out is very, very important on this map. This map is very well known for clumping, and because it's just not a particularly wide map, and we can see, well, that's actually the wide view. Let's look at the narrow view, let's see. Yeah, it's not a particularly wide map. It's actually kind of uh, thin. You can see how clumped up everything is compared to normal. Makes artillery very, very good. So we see some Mop Suthans and some BMP SP-1 anti-tank. Ranking infantry vehicles also supporting. And he just wants to get these mop shoots in, in position so we can snipe at some enemies. And he's got artillery fire actually covering this approach, so very, very good from a swabby. But it looks like he's going to lose this BMP SP1 to these T64Bs. And in fact, that's what happened. But the mop shoots in are actually getting relatively close and might be able to force back some tanks. So far, Tiga playing relatively flawlessly. Um, has a pretty good lead going on. Wasabi. Shelling out all these locations. Lots of infantry here, so this could actually be effective. And whoa, Mott shoots and completely stomped in. Multi flank attacks. It's not even able to strike. It was unable to reach these bushes, which of course would give it cover. And there isn't actually a recon around here to spot them. It's a little bit of a, a misstep, a mistake, a miscalculation from Wasabi, who is now pulling out the counter T64B, which is slightly better than T64M1. And miss, miss, miss. It always sucks when you visually see rockets miss. And the enemy is also missing. Oh, T64. Looks like he's. Yep, he's going to shell this out with artillery. Now, of course, uh, th this artillery, the Akatsia, is actually really good against infantry, and there's a lot of infantry on the map. It's just rather unfortunate that uh, it's just not connecting with any infantry. He seems to be trying to target down tanks with it. So a very slow game, very methodical game, very tactical game. Looks like Tika will be going for a tank game, and he pulls out the big guns, the T-80BV, Possibly the most expensive tank in the game. Frigatiga. And uh, slowly going to move up a lot of tanks and fatten out his enemy his lines. And this tank, of course, is uh, you know pretty powerful. It's got two reflex rockets, which will probably one-shot stuff, so keep that in mind. It's not a horrible investment. By any means, and um, yeah, it looks like it, it will be a standstill for now. And we can see a few mortal strategies are actually able to get into the woods here, but it looks like they might get fended off. Mort shoots and is actually chasing him down. Artillery fire trying to cover and might do a little bit of moral damage, but not really going to do anything other than that. And it looks like, yes, in fact, this has been shut down. The Burrotinos are actually being refueled right now to restock, so they'll be doing some action very soon. And, uh, whoa. This is possibly one more one sided match of the tournament. And I don't mean in terms of score, I mean in terms of actual units not performing. Whew. It's now a 200 point game, 170 point lead for Tiga. It's still anyone's game, of course, but we all know T1. We, uh, we, we all like we just all pretend like you know the other guy has a shot, but in reality, this is Tiga. The guy might as well have made the game. Does he have a FOB? He does. And let's see it back here. A lot of anti-aircraft units. Okay. So it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, a lot of artillery fire trying to catch up with some lucky shots. And whoa, we actually got a Mott shoots in there. Can he get another one? That would be pretty critical. And Tiga, actually playing a macro game, has a, a third command on the map and is taking the two four-point positions. This is pretty key. Controlling just one of these is considered to be huge. 
controlling two of these is considered to be game breaking. And a Burrotino moving forward and, and shelling out this location here could actually do some damage to this. Ooh, almost got a command with one of those rockets, but unfortunately that Burrotino volley did nothing. And the Burrotino volleys, of course, are probably some of the most expensive in the game. And so now that Tiga has three positions on the map, this might just signal Wasabi to freak out and go all in. Because right now he's not actually in a position where he can just sit and wait. Unfortunately for him, he, he's sitting on a 2 and a 3, which represents half of the amount of points that the Tiga has. And so it looks like she's going to shell out with a lot of uh, Burrotino fire. He has a second Burrotino coming as well. So he's going to clear out these opening bushes first, and maybe he'll push forward. Hard to say what he's planning just yet. I'm actually even amazed that Wasabi tried to play standard against Tiga. And truth be told, if I was playing against Tiga, I would just cheese the hell out of him. I would get 30 infantry carriers and like, like 10 helicopters, and I would just rush the infantry target down his anti-infantry weapon, his anti-aircraft weapons, and then just pick off all his commands. That's what I would do. But I'm not Wasabi. Mostly because I would fear a legitimate match with Tiga. This guy is actually scary. Another empty volley, but we do see... Nope. Actually, it was completely empty. Nothing happened. Um, this is totally the coolest thing ever. He has uh, this VPZU completely with all ammo off and this is something you can just toggle on if it's en his enemy just rushes forward and it just shows it goes to show how fast fingered how fast clicking of a player Tiga is to be able to do all this at once now if you don't mind while well, this Bertino volley or Bertino duel goes on I'm going to take a sip of my hot chocolate ah, that's some good hot chocolate all right back into the action or lack of action Tiga has actually fattened up his number of artillery. He's got two Malkas coming in to supplement the Bertino. Uh, does, no, there's actually no FOB here for Wasabi, meaning that every single time he fires a Bertino, he's going to need at least one supply truck to get another another um, uh, volley in. So it's going to cost him about 15 points per, per attack. So remember, every time he attacks, if he doesn't get more than 15 points, it hasn't paid off. And see the counter Bertino actually going to fire back now. The Bertino completely empty, running away to this supply helicopter. And this is kind of a, a problem with this style of play, which you have no FOB when doing on specifically on this map, which is very artillery heavy. Um, you end up maxing out the number of art, of uh, supply vehicles, and you completely have no supply left. And so it's kind of a losing game. <laughs> Tiga, what are you doing? Are you just rubbing in how good you are? Tiga is actually taking a fourth position and basically has more units on the map now. Kind of scary. I'm thinking we could see some kind of all inning type thing with Tiga very soon where he just grabs like a large number of high veterancy tanks or high veterancy helicopters or, or tank destroyers or something and just goes with it. Goes for it. Maybe even like high infantry VPZUs. Who knows? Um, so for now, it's just a Bertino fire, and this is the unfortunate side of getting a map from a good player on a map that is notorious for um, for artillery fire. And we can see here that the Mi17 does go down. A nice strike by Wasabi, keeping the game relatively close, only half behind right now. And we actually see a Bertino going through the woods in the sketchiest possible location, wanting to shell out this forward location here. Which, of course, there is only one place in this entire location that you can possibly put your command armor, and it has to be in the little trek forward, so it's actually a very good location to shell out with a Bertino. And the Bertino duels do continue. Um, actually, quite a bit of damage on that, on that volley. Hasn't done any critical damage yet, not really destroyed, but he has had some success, and here we go, lots of artillery fire, crushing Tiga does, 
knocking out this position here and now this gives him opportunity where he can actually fortify one of these fallen buildings here and completely stop the reinforcement line for Wasabi who doesn't actually have that much left here. As this artillery fire continues also keep in mind that this is the location that if it's hit by artillery and units are coming in they will get so stuck. So we see the Buratino firing in this location which is going to be much better. It should do a lot more damage and looks like it will. Yeah, actually get some good hits there. Doesn't get the command armor, but he does have some colos here. Three colos in fact actually to support that. Tika actually getting even more Malkas now. He has another three Malkas and he has a supply truck. It looks like he's going to go bring it fairly close to this location here so he can shell this location and completely stop reinforcements. A great tactical decision from Tika. Oh, lots of damage being done here. Tanks being stunned, demoralized, panicking. I'm reading text message. I'm not responding because it's a boring text message. And it looks like, yep, here we go. Three Maltas firing on this location here. Gets one BMP down. And the rest of the misses. But keep in mind, there's a huge difference between the Malka artillery versus the Buratino. The Buratino is very, very costly. And it fires like 20 rockets at once. Whereas the the Malkas fire one at a time and are not quite as costly. And look, the Mott shoots are actually moving into positions to actually do a lot of damage. We see a lot of units moving forward, stuck in mud, it says. And now the Mott shoots have actually taken position to effectively stop reinforcements from Wasabi. And you're looking at this and you're thinking like, well, this tactic is nothing particularly special. And it's not really the tactic that is particularly special. It is the amount of control and the effectiveness of, the, of these units that is important here. Teague is probably operating at about 200 to 250 actions per minute. Just manipulating units around and uh, repositioning. And he's actually cleared this location. Motschusen has in fact taken the bunkered location. And this means that any reinforcement units can will can and will get ambushed. And this is what I'm talking about. One BMP down. Looks like he might get another one. Nope. It rushes into the woods. And there's a Mott shoots in here also gonna get picked off. And it does. And yeah, this is a very, very bad situation for Wasabi, who needs to throw a lot of this. Because this is a real problem. He might even want to pull back his birth, you know, and shell out these woods because this is actually scary. These towns are the most fortified locations and give the best cover. They also make you the most stealthy and hardest to see. I'm pretty sure Blue can't even see this guy. No, he actually can't, so that's something. You see more Mott Schutzens popping forward. TO-55 gonna run by, it's got use of fire position command, and this is a key difference between players who are really good in the tournament and players who are just average. When you're moving units into a position where you know the enemy is, use the fire on position command, and this will affirm that they will, although slightly slower, attack the location instead of just running into traps. Speaking of running into traps, it appears that all these forces will in fact get taken out by massive giant patrols of Mott Schutzens. And even this poor anti-aircraft will go down. Every single unit he rallies in almost immediately dies. This might finally be able to push at Mott Schutzens, and it does. Mott Schutzens, of course, are already almost out of ammunition, so that's something. Actually, no, there's, there's, they're just out of rockets. They, they still have grenades left. And actually, with tank support, this Moto Strelsi is actually pretty low on health, and this crazy push, here comes the Buratino fire, this could have been done a lot earlier, big stuns on the tanks, and this is another thing about control, anything that could have been done earlier should have been done earlier, and if it wasn't done earlier, then you need to really add that into your thought patterns. A lot of these real-time tactical games are about planning, what, when, why do I have flanks, what's in position for what, where do I have things there? And if you can master just the knowledge of the map and what to do on every single position, you're going to win the game. So it's still not as bad as a lot of the games you've been watching. A lot of the games you've been watching have seen uh, games where immediately one player 
dies and the other player does not. So it's actually possible Wasabi is actually a fairly good player and it's actually possible that it's just unfortunate for him to um, to hit Tiga on the ladder. Not on the ladder, in the tournament. And uh, this Burrotina of course is now useless because it, supply trucks cannot get through this and it's out of ammunition. If only there was an FOB here. And that's one of the things with this thing. I have mentioned why not have an FOB. Main reason is because you don't want to defend it because the areas you will be getting, which will usually be here and uh, here, are really far away from here and it would mean that you'd have to put some units here to defend this. And of course you look at Tiga, Tiga's actually done just that. He has some units, not a lot, but some just to defend this because he knows he needs this for his artillery fire because this map, Hell's Highway, is very big on artillery. So we have some TO-62s winding up against something but quickly moving away. Could be burning out these woods if it wanted to. There wouldn't be much of a cost for there. But um, another thing that uh, a good player like Tiga does, that an average player would not do, is if he knows a unit is somewhere, he will remember it. And he, if it's not there, he'll think to himself, well, where would I move it to? And that's where he fires. And you can see a lot of these guys, um, Ben Gru is actually really good at this, and a lot of his micro is based around a lot of guesswork, actually. He's using a lot of fire position on the move. Um, just being able to guess where the enemy's units are, effectively, is a great skill for a tactical game. Um, so it looks like their command is actually going to get pulled back from Bravo, and he looks like he's going to escape to Alpha. He's kind of forfeiting this position, it, it appears. Mostly because he needs reinforcements, and fortunately he can't get them from here. So we see a slow push up from Tiga, and T64 might snipe off this recon. Yes, it does. And uh, what else can we talk about? Why is it that Tiga has all those tanks in clumped groups like this? Well, quite simply, by having them spread out on a map that is very tiny. He makes himself very, very vulnerable to artillery fire. Um, if this map were, say, bigger, you might spread up your units, and that way you can cover more territory. Wasabi's actually pulling a lot of stuff back. I don't know if he should give up this town yet. That town, of course, will be very important in keeping him into the game. Unfortunately, most of his units are actually covering this flank here, which is what, what I would think of as the standard flank for this map. A flank in which a person's trying to snake out this delta territory. And it's one of these places where it's kind of imbalanced. So we have roughly 12 minutes left in the game. It appears that Tiga will in fact take this with relative ease, having a nice 600-700 point lead. And um, this could just... Oh, here he goes. He's actually going to go in for a kill. He's moving lots of tanks forward, leading with the T-55s, T-64 supporting, and T-80Us all the way in the back. I'm going to pound up them tanks. The T-55s are getting stunned and pushed back, though, and it may just appear that Tiga will just go for a push, realizing he has such a massive points lead. He's actually just going to bypass, and oh, the T-64s are coming to intercept some T-55s. A minor victory for Wasabi as not many shots get off for Tika, but oh my god, here comes the fire position command that I was talking about. Gets a couple of good shots off, and he has a recon now. A recon helicopter phoned in, trying to figure out where stuff is. This Matschutzens are actually trying to retreat, but of course are going to get picked off by the enemy's Matschutzens. Tanks got cleared up by artillery and T-55s, and this, this artillery carrier is actually going to run away. There isn't two anti-tank guns here which can be deployed and can catch this tank relatively easy if it just gets deployed, if it just were to get unloaded at any second it could just catch these tanks as they run down the road don't even need these T-64s and there we go, now it's finally deployed and unfortunately Kiki gets a lot more down to those T-55s than he ought to, he kills a T-64 which I think to be a bit of fair trade now he knows all the units are here, he's shelling it out with artillery, forcing everything to move away, and um, yeah, it just seems that Wasabi is generally screwed. 
The map is very red now. The map is actually filling up with T-55 tanks in bulk, in groups of two, which basically means that he went two T-55, two T-55, two T-55. Like he was just spamming two double clicks and clicking on the map. And he's actually using these T-55s to fatten up his line and keep himself secured. He doesn't want to throw away the game, per se, because he, he does have a lot of money on the line. So he's actually just going to sit back, defend, which is what I would call a standard strategy for Hell's Highway. Sit and defend with giant defensive lines, and then shell out the enemy with um, with artillery. We have so many tanks showing up, and this is just because of the massive income lead that it currently has that allows him to get out such an insanely high number of tanks. And uh, looks like his supply is probably, no, it's actually not doing too bad, so it'll survive for another two minutes. But yeah, that's actually what he's going to do. There will be no cleanup here. It'll just be a standardized sit back, uh, fatten up your defense, and win the game. There's really not much that that Wasabi can do to. Uh, or there's basically nothing Tegan needs to do right now. The honus is not really on him. He's already won. He knows this, but he can throw away the game by losing too many units to clumps of Bertino fire or anti-tank weapons or any of that and uh, looking at the Tiki cam he does know quite a, he knew quite a bit so well, that's a Tiki game that's intense round three Tiki game of course Wasabi didn't do too bad considering he's only a 1500 ELO player will we see more games from Tiga? Hard to say, but I can guarantee you he'll probably be in the top 16, but if you get Tiga on the tournament, please do infantry helicopter all-ins against this guy, just all-in the hell out of him, like try and cheat him out of the ladder because man, nothing would make my day better than to have just radical matches in which Tiga has to defend the most random crap, but hey, I'm just a commentator. My name is Trollmaker. And I'd like to thank you for watching. And I got two more games for the day. And they're both quite good 1800 versus 1800 raid player matches. So definitely watch them. Thank you for watching.